excited to introduce Jim. I've worked with Jim for 21 years. Uh, my predecessor, Sue Smith, uh, I met her a few years after I had been working here, and she told me how much she wor missed working with Jim. And I, I, I uh, at the time, appreciated that, but now as it's getting closer to, to Jim's retirement, I appreciate that even more. Those are words that I would echo. I definitely will miss working with Jim. I think this building is a perfect place for this uh, event to happen. Uh, a building that Jim uh, was very passionate about saving, worked hard, uh, taking an old, dilapidated uh, uh, building and, and turning it into a beautiful space that uh, is, is really representative of Los Angeles County. And that's exactly what Jim's done for the last 13 years. So, anyway, we'll, uh, Jim will have until 2 o'clock, I guess, and if others want to stick around after the 2 o'clock, if there's other events that are going on, you're welcome to, to stick around.
hand shovel. The culprit was a couple of weeks. And then we got it fixed. Well, I told Joe, let's make a batch of gas. We can do that. That's what he hired me for. Let's go. So we did. Um, then, uh, 93, uh, we built Hamlet Field. And Hamlet Field was donated by Jim Lockwood. And the beauty of it is, is uh, there's a little history behind it. And he said, I want to call it Hamlet Field. I said, you're into Shakespeare. He said, no. It was the name of the cat. And the cat went over. And so, Megan's being the way we are, nicknamed it Black Cat Field. <laughs> Then, uh, in the four, we started building the Mass Science Building. And God, it was weird. Everything we did, we'd find something new. At the northeast corner of where the building's going was a dry well we uncovered. And where that dry well was, there was a little driveway. I don't know if anybody remembers. I took a track or that. Well, that's where we worked on the buses and we worked on everything. This dry well was just covered with a few boards. And when we had the backhoe in there and we uncovered it, I took my flashlight to try to see the bottom of the crew. So I got the mirror out of the men's room, got the sun to put it in the back, and it was deep. And when you think about those people that dug that, and somebody's down there and looking the guy up above, he's really good with the bucket. <laughs> anyway, we got that. And also in 1994, the first uh, Wasatch powwow was held. Courtesy of Forrest Kutch. And him and I talked about a bunch of stuff. He said, How come you're not out there dancing? I said, Well, look at all the white guys. They're all bouncing. And everybody else is going straight. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. However, um, some blackbirds showed up. I don't know if they're ravens or crows. However, and I said, I've never seen them in this county. And they showed up and circled around. And uh, they're still here. They took over the pine trees by Pierce Hall, mm -hmm. and they're nesting and having a little one. It's kind of neat, so thank you. <laughs> uh, 95, we built new tennis courts west of the MPD, and we dedicated the Mass Science Building. And uh, end, at the end of, um, oh, they were laying brick. And there's a friend of mine, Jim Dumas, who was working, and he was up on the scaffolding. He said, come up here. Okay, what do you got? I don't know if he lined it up with someone else or what, but I went up there and they took my picture uh, and I laid the last brick. And that was kind of neat, you know. So in one of the old Today magazines, there's a little picture. You kind of say it's me. <laughs> um, uh, we remodeled, in 97, we remodeled the old grocery and meat market on 350 South, or 300 South and 2nd West. And uh, we went through a lot of phases, and we discussed what we going to do. And in the end, uh, we're almost going to have it be a student bakery. And if you remember that, I have some drawings I donated to the museum. Anyway, we ended up going, okay, we'll go with the coffee house. We'll make that. And uh, it's, kids really like it. So, um, let's see. Moving right along. <laughs> uh, in 1998, we replaced the quad sewer system. It goes from the head of school's house all the way across campus and then um, to the west by the old admin building. Uh, the admission people weren't really happy with me because it was really dug up. And, uh, they complained to Joe, and he said, well, that's it. I said, look, people are going to look at that and go, wow, these people are putting people, money back into the um, infrastructure. And, uh, well, they didn't see it that way. <laughs> <laughs> now, does everybody remember the year 2000 and the computer scare? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's going, oh, God, Well, we have boilers, we have all kinds of stuff. Computer control. And I belong to an organization called UFOMA. It's all the facility managers in Utah high schools. And uh, we got together 
everybody's talking to me. What are we going to do? And a guy from Richfield went, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> really? And I kind of like this Kendall Deuce, and he's a good guy. And I, I went, okay, so what's the plan? He said, well, have you guys sit up and watch TV. About 8 o'clock, um, the new year will hit Australia. And then you watch what happens. If nothing happens, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> if something happens, you turn everything on. And then watch the news. What, what's everybody doing? Because somebody will come up with something. But, uh, that, that's the best plan I've ever <laughs> um, See, then, oh, the year 2000 was kind of hard on us. That was a bad year for Wasatch. February 8th, we had a bomb threat. My wife woke me up about 2.30 in the morning, and I drove like a madman. I don't know what lane I was in or anything. I got up to the admin building, and Frank Moody was in there, and he was handing out keys. And the phone was ringing, and I said, okay, you got that handle. I'm going to go out to the cop shop, and I'll talk to the, shit, or to the chief of police. Um. So I went up, to, up there, and I won't say his name, but I went in there and said, you know, we got a bomb threat. He goes, yeah, but it's probably nothing. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but that's small town stuff. You know? I said, no, we, we, we have to respond to this. And uh, he said, well, I don't know. Well, then the phone rang. And all of a sudden, I've never seen anybody can sit at attention. He's like, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he hung up the phone. And he said, do you know that was a federal judge? And I said, yeah, I bet his name's Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for uh, watching out for our safety. And they got the, we, we had two bomb squad dogs come in. And I got made this and split up and we went around. And what was really bad was at that time, we started about, oh, 6.30. And they said, bomb dogs are different than drug dogs. They don't go all crazy. If they sit down, don't do anything. Okay. We were going through everything, and alarm clocks were going off. The student, and that's kind of unnerving. <laughs> on one door, I just lost it for a minute. I just opened it. It was like a movie moment. We go, oh, when's the boom going to come? <laughs> November 29th, we had a palace storm caught on fire. And I've never been around anything like that. I've never hurt so bad just watching part of your dream go up. And uh, at any rate, I was in the campus fire marshal program at the time. That's well, I still am. But uh, I called the state uh, fire marshal. I said, God, we've got a fire down here. And we're going to need to get this open as fast as we can. And he goes, well, is it out? No. And he says, call me when it's out. I said, well, it'll probably be tonight. He said, all right, I'll give you my personal home number. And, and give it to the fire chief. And soon said, I'll have him call me. I said, OK. And I said, I, you know, you don't owe me any favors. I just, but I really need this favor. And he got on it. And the next day, there was a fire marshal here to investigate. His name was Lynn Barra. And he had the eyes that could stare right through you. And I think you remember him. And you're sitting, I mean, he interviewed everybody, including me. And you're sitting there looking at him, and he's, and you're thinking, I feel, I feel like I'm guilty. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I said, um, do you investigate a lot of schools? He said, we do. I said, then you know that most teachers are anarchists. And he goes, what do you mean? Well, they don't turn off lights or shut windows. Or sometimes <laughs> coming back from the camping trip, they won't put the um, camp camping stuff where it goes, just put it in the attic. He goes, OK. And uh, anyway, um, in fact, I joke with Paul about this all the time. I said, well, uh, on that, we, we decided that it would take Alice Storm 
which was uh, faculty housing at the time. And what we do is make it into a dorm. And not not Alice, I'm sorry, it was Lincoln. But uh, at any rate, we did that in 28 days. And what I, 28 working days. Um, what I joke with Paul is, see what you can do when you don't have a budget? <laughs> it works pretty good. Um, getting back to, I'll have to go back. Um, at one time, the board of trustees decided that they wanted some fire escapes on the schoolhouse. And I said, well, I'll get a copy of the universe. Back then, it was a universal fire code. And, and I looked through it and read it, and I went, I don't think we can. There's, if you remember the power lines that went through right next to the schoolhouse, and I said, we got power lines in places. We can't put them in windows. We don't have any doors upstairs. Said, it doesn't matter. And Joe said, what do you think we should do? I said, well, um, I'll call the State Fire Marshal Office, and this is before I was in the Fire Marshal as a deputy. And I said, he said, what do you think will happen? I said, well, it'll probably be all right, or we're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Michael Jensen. He came walking up, and he said, you sure you want me to walk through here? Yeah. And uh, he said, I have to write down everything I see, okay? And uh, let's go. He had a notebook, a lot like this one. And when we were John, he had six pages, both sides. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at it, and a lot of it was, look, you gotta put in fire doors on your classrooms and things like that. I'm going, God, that, that changed the whole ambience of this school. It just wouldn't be the same. He went, or, all right. <laughs> but in the sprinkler system, fire alarms, smoke detectors, and then have it monitored off campus. So that's what we did. Um, there was somebody that's kind of worried about it. They got a hold of Joe and said, you know, all those pipes and everything, said, that's not going to look good. I said, Joe, we'll paint the pipes. And look, we've got steam pipes everywhere anyway. So it won't be a deal. But we, we got it going. Well, this Michael Jensen came back when everything was installed. And he goes, All right, I, I want to go look at your old chemistry lab again. Okay, so we went upstairs. And I don't know if anybody remembers it, but it, it was pretty shabby, <laughs> to say the least. But anyway, he looked at it and he went, You've never been to any of our fire marshal seminars, have you? No, but I got a feeling I'm going to get invited. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you are. And then that's when I got involved in uh, going to school and get, uh, getting to be inspector number one. Um, see, we dug out the power going across campus in 2001. Uh, admissions was happy again. <laughs> uh, then uh, we went through and had some different lines put in, fire lines and things, so we dug it out. And by then, I think a mission is going, that's what that guy's does. <laughs> well, that's the only way to get stuff in. Um, okay, in 2004, we completed the Lewis, Lewis Lofton Student Center, and it changed the direction and the attitude of everybody in the school. You can't believe the difference that made. Before that, we had a basement of a TD. Uh, you go down that into the basement, and you walk by the men's room and the women's room in, in, in the east, and it's not quite what you should have with an eating establishment. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, and we have a special guest here, uh, Jan Buchanan. She, was, she ran the kitchen. Stand up. <laughs> she was a lot of fun to work with. <laughs> um, in 2004, also, we had the, the first international speech and debate competition that was brought here by Taft Bay. And it had never been in the United States, it had always been in Europe. I think Europe, right? 
all over the world. Yeah. So anyway, they came, and the kids were here. So they're going to start tomorrow. And um, the fire marshal was here. We're walking through the building, and he goes, Ah, you don't have any asphalt down in the back. I said, No. You got to put asphalt down when it's like 50 degrees and rising. I said, We can't now. It's too cold. In fact, it was snowing that day. <laughs> and God, I don't know. Well, what, what we'll do is we'll get the uh, authority of this area, which is your fire chief, have him come down. If he okays it, I'll, I'll write it off and sign you off. Okay? So I got a hold of Sam Draper and I said, yeah, need you come down and help me out here. All right. He came down, he looked, and he, he said, look, if Jim said we're going to do it, he's going to do it, so don't worry about it. I, I, I accept it. All right, and so we were on. Life's lovely. Mm -hmm. I'm walking Sam up to his truck, and he goes, hey, by the way, we got a uh, Little League baseball tournament coming up. Would you out there? What are you going to do? <laughs> You're stuck. So I did that for three years, and finally said, unless you get some police up here, I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> But it was, it was different. Uh, 2005, we purchased the old uh, State Street gym from from the city. Uh, it used to be North San Diego's gym, and it's really been good to us. Good, we, have, we got a good deal on it. Um, we just take care of it, and the city pays the utilities and everything. I mean, we, I, I, what's wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> Burn fishing. What's wrong with this deal? So it's too good to be true. Well, sometimes that happens. You know? um, we did the skate park uh, west of the MPB back then, if you remember. There was a little one, and the uh, skate park had moved several places between Phoenix, no, um, Darlington and Sage, and then the back of the Bidwell, there's it's too noisy. Okay. So then we went to the old tennis courts, and then we went, went behind the MPV. And then finally, uh, we got a professional uh, company to come in and build one we had I had no idea that they could buy skate parks, but I don't know if they bought it. Yeah. <laughs> 